All right. It is 36 minutes after the hour, so it's the end of our 10 minute break. Um, so we are back and welcome back everyone. Uh, uh, so now Paul's going to be sharing with us um, how we can do this analysis on several files. So uh, Paul. I guess I should unmute. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jessica. Um, uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna be looking. The notebook you should be looking at now is processing multiple multiple files and writing files. And I'm going to share mine in just a second here. There we go. Um, and before I launch into this, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Jessica already mentioned that there will be other longer versions. This this workshop was originally developed to take twelve hours, and we only took. Uh, three or four pieces from that uh, earlier workshop. And so we're going to be offering the workshop again, I'm not sure, probably sometime in the summer. And th that announcement will be coming out uh, from uh, uh, from MOLSI. So you should probably uh, go to the uh, MOLSI website, M-O-L-S-S-I.org, uh, join their mailing list, and then that will, uh, then you'll know when the workshop's going to happen. Um, other people are asking, can we see the solutions? Uh, and we'll actually provide a Jupyter book, a link to a Jupyter book at the end of the workshop uh, that shows you that. And then at the end, Jessica is also going to show how you can download the files, the notebooks you're working on today, so you can keep working on them. All right, so moving into processing multiple files, one of the questions in the last session is, what if we want to look at a whole bunch of PDD files and pull out the het names or something like that? Uh, and so... Uh, the question for this for this uh, session is how do I analyze multiple files at once? And we'll continue to import Python libraries and use some Python functions. Uh, we're going to be looking at for loops and nested for loops. And something new we'll do in this section is actually writing to a file. There's a new library we're going to look at called the glob. Uh, and, and we're also going to be practicing printing to, uh, to a new file. So if we're going to be processing multiple files, we need to import libraries that we're going to use for this. And uh, in the format that we're using is the same as we've used before, which is you use the command import and then the library name. Uh, and, and then if you want to use something in that library, uh, you, you have some output and you say it equals to use the library name dot the function name that's found in that library and then some type of input. So um, oh, here's a good uh, check your understanding question. He says, how would you use the os.path module to point to the directory where your PDD files are located? And well, I'm actually, I'm stepping back from that one because I don't know if I wrote that question. So this is, well, we'll do the import path again. I'm sorry, import OS again. And we use the os.path.join function to point to the, to the folder. Now, in this case, um, the folder where we have the, uh, the, the PDB files, it's just called PDB files, okay? Uh, so, and I, I need to assign that to a variable. So I'll call this one folder path. We may come back and use that or use a different, a different version in a bit. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to actually look at all of the files in our location. And uh, okay, I got ahead of myself here. Let me back up. So we want to look at all of the files in the PDB files folder. We want to know what's in there, all right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us that file location using that os.path function, os.path.join. And in this case, we've got the PDB files folder. But then instead of identifying a particular PDB file, I'm just going to say asterisk.pdb. And so that's going to point to all the files in that folder. If I put, if I type in now print file location, what it tells us is that it points to that folder PDB files 
And the wildcard says it's pointing to the folder and it contains a group of PDB files. So now we're able to look at that folder that contains all those files, but we need, a spec we need some other functions to pull out those individual files and to deal with those files uh, with a group of files in a single location. And that particular uh, library that does that is called glob. So I'm gonna say import glob to bring in the glob library. And this is a little bit confusing. The function in the glob library that we're gonna use is called glob. Now I haven't used glob except in this case. So I don't know if glob has other functions in it or not. And I, I don't even know if glob is an acronym for something, but uh, what we'll do here is I wanna get a list of the file names. So I just put in a variable, I call it file names equal glob dot glob. And then, uh, and then I put it as, as the, um, the variable here, file location. And I'm gonna say print file names. And you can see that it actually prints each of the file names, giving first the folder that it's in and then the file name. And there are 10 items there. And in fact, I'm gonna go in uh, and uh, just for interest, I'm gonna say uh, type, I'm just gonna say print type file names. And it tells us it's a list. All right, so with the glob function, we now have been able to create a list that has all the files that are located in the PDB files folder. And so now file names, that variable is that list that we can use moving down. And we'll go through this reading multiple files with, nest, uh, with nested for loops. Um, and, and then there'll be an exercise that, to check your understanding, all right? So now we have this list, file names, that has all of the PDB files in the PDB files directory. And if we wanna parse every file in that list, we need a for loop to go through the file. All right, and so the way we do this, is I'm gonna write a for, a for loop. So for F in file names. So F is the variable and F is gonna to point to each of the elements in the file names list. There's a colon here. We put the colon in and hit return. That tells Python to indent. Now I'm gonna tell it as it's, it's gonna go through this whole list. And I'm gonna say with open F. So that's the variable here. And I'm gonna put an R in single quotes. Now we can use either single quotes or double quotes. I think single quotes and double quotes are interchangeable in Python, but they have to match. So you can't start with a single quote and end with a double quote. You have, to, you have to match them. So this R tells it to read the file. I'm gonna call it out file. And notice it indents again. And I'm gonna use data. So that's gonna become a list with all the lines in this file. Data equals out file dot read lines. So these are all things we've seen before. So that means as we come into this for loop, the for loop is gonna go through all 10 of the PDB files that are in the file names list. And now I'm gonna do a nested for loop. So I'm gonna take the information that's in out file right now. So this is for one specific PDB file. I'm gonna create a new for loop here. So I'm gonna say for line in data colon. Once again, that colon causes Python to indent. Now I'm going to use a logic statement because I want to find out the resolution. So I'm going to say if, and then I put in single quotes, resolution, period. Now I, I know this because I've looked at the file. I know that resolution period is what I want, not just resolution. So if resolution in line, Then I create a new variable called res line equals line. So in that step, I've assigned whatever is in the line that contains resolution to a variable called res line. Then I'm going to say words equals 
res line dot, actually, I'm gonna do what Jessica did. I'm gonna, at this point, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna actually print res line so you can see what we're getting. And you can see when I say print res line, we get remark to resolution period 3.10 and then angstroms with followed by a period. So uh, if, if I split this line right here, then the first element, if I make this a list, the first oh, element, I, go ahead, go ahead, Jessica. Um, yeah. Can you um, print in your print statement, can you also print the file name so that we know which file those lines are coming from? Just to show yes. that these are different. Uh, I think you want to name it F. Oh, right, I do. Thank you. All right. Okay, so you can see that the resolution is coming for each of these separate files. Now, our, our ultimate goal is just to list the resolution. So um, I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to actually comment this statement out because you might want to still see it. And I'm just gonna say print res line. When I do that, we see that each of these lines contains this information. And if we split this line, it's gonna split based on the spaces. So this is element zero will be remark, element one will be two, element two will be resolution with a period, element three will be 3.10, that's what we want, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm going to comment this line out too, because I don't want to keep printing all that stuff up. And I'm going to say words equal res line dot split. So that's going to split that line into a list. Actually, that's going to split that res line line into a list that's found in words. I'm going to say resolution equals float words three and then print resolution now notice that i i did this float words three thing here okay oh, there's a typo words the reason i did that was because i know that later on i want to treat resolution as a number not as a string so i'm converting it to a floating point number here all right so when i when i hit the um the shift return, I get a list of the resolutions for all those structures right here. Now that's a lot of, uh, I mean, that's 10 lines of code. I went through it very quickly. So I'm gonna stop for a minute and let you catch up. All right, I'm gonna get back into this now. All right, so at this point we have a list of the resolutions, but as we did before, there's, uh, we don't know which file the resolution goes to. And so what we wanna do uh, is we wanna pull that out. And this is interesting because I, I, have a, I have a cheat sheet I'm looking at as I do this to tell you what I'm doing. But as I'm doing this, I think I've figured out a much better, cleaner solution, but I'm gonna do the way that I know works for sure, all right? But before we do that, let's look at what we have in this cell. We have a for loop inside a for loop. So the inside for loop is reading the data in one PDB file and pulling out the resolution. The outside for loop takes us through all of the PDB files one at a time. So it's a nested for loop, okay? So what we want to do at this point is we wanna find out, we wanna, we wanna get the name of the PDB file or actually the PDB ID. So um, if you look up, I, I'm scrolling up my screen a little bit here. Here we have in this list, we had pdb underscore file slash 1ddo.pdb. So the pdb ID for this file is actually 1ddo. That's what we want to get out. All right. So if we want to get that name out. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say first file equals file names zero. And if I print first 
file, I get that list. So it tells me what the file name is, but it gives me the folder that it's located in. Well, I want to, I want to pull out the name of the PDB file. Uh, from that variable. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another OS function. So I'm going to say file name equals OS dot path. We've used that before, but now I'm going to use base name of first file. Now if I print file name, you can see that I get just the name of the PDB file, not the path that leads to it. So we've got a little check your understanding here. Question is, how would you extract the PDB ID itself? So just the one DDO from the file, from, um, from file name. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to wrestle with that. And, oh, I realize I need to give a hint here because we haven't touched this before. Whenever we use the split command before, okay. So before we've done something like this, where we wrote file, I'm, I'm, I'm in a markdown cell right now, file name dot split. and just parentheses after it to split the file name into different portions based on spaces. The default there is spaces. But if you put in, in quotes, a period, it will split only on the period, all right? So uh, using that, uh, see if you can figure out how to pull the, the, uh, the, the PDB ID out of the file name. Okay, there's a question. The PDB ID is a line in the file um, it's probably going to be found in lines in the file, but the PDB ID is part of the file name itself. That's what we're working with. I'm not sure if I understand your question correctly. All right, I've got an answer here. I think it'll work. So I'll just paste it into my screen so you can see it. So we've got PDB split equals file name. So that's our variable dot split, and then using the split function looks for a period, and the PDB ID is equal to the PDB split zero. So it, it picks the first element in that list, which is one DDO, and, and that worked. Very nice. All right, now we're going to move on to printing to a file, and uh, I want to go over the syntax here before we actually go to an example. Actually, um, I want to go go through how you can how we could actually create a nice output of our information uh, for for getting the these uh, resolutions. All right, so. We're going to, I'm going to go back up and I'm going to grab this loop that I had originally. I'm just going to grab that text. Bring it down here. So that's the same, the same exact that we had before. And uh, what I'm going to do in the first part of this loop is I'm actually going to get, get the PDB ID. So I'm going to say file name equals os.path.base name. But our target here is f because that's that's what the particular file that's coming through right now is, called, is referred to as f. We can do this even before we read the file. So I'm going to split the file name. So split file name equals file name dot split. And I'm splitting on the period. And then I'll, and then I'll say PDB ID 
equals split file name zero. All right, so in doing that, that should pull out the PDB ID, that, that four character alphanumeric label for a structure. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna read the data and we can use exactly the same, the code we used before. So this with open, and then an open parentheses F. Once again, F refers to the file that's coming through the loop. R tells us it's gonna read it. Out file is a variable it's assigned to. And then data equals out file dot read lines. So it's gonna read the lines through and create a, create a list. Uh, data is a list of all the lines from the file. Now we're looking at it. We're saying for line in data, looks for the resolution in the line. I'm gonna get rid of these two lines. So if resolution in line, and once again, it has to be all uppercase, there has to be a period next to it. We say res line equals line, which is what we did before. Now we're taking, we're taking words equals res line dot split. So we're splitting that line into words. And the split in this case is based on, on a space between words. We know that the resolution is actually the third element in the list. So resolution equal float words. But instead of saying print resolution, I'm gonna say print PDB ID, which is what we created up here. I wanna put a colon after that. So I'm gonna put colon and a space comma, I'm gonna print resolution. Put another comma and type in angstroms. And if that worked properly, let, let's look at what it should do. What it should do is working from the inside out, it should pull out the resolution for each of the files. And when, it, when it's done, it will print the PDB ID for that file the resolution for that file in a statement, PDB ID colon um, res, uh, with the resolution value followed by the word angstroms. And it should do that for each of the files on our list. So let's see if it worked. And it did. So this tells us the PDB ID and the resolution for each of these files. Now earlier, somebody mentioned pandas uh, and you can pull information, take information like this, put it into pandas and it becomes very easily sortable, organizable, calculable, all kinds of things you can do with it. So that's pulling the information out of that file. And now we're gonna take a look at printing to a file. Let me check the... Okay, I don't see a lot of action in chat, so I think we're all together. So quite often, instead of just having things go to the screen, you want to print it to a file that you might not want to put in, you know, put in your, uh, in your folder on your computer. Um, you might want to save this information for later. In fact, you almost always do. And so we need to figure out how to, how to write to a file. And it's going to be a similar approach than we've used before. And with... Uh, this approach, we're going to use this same syntax where we say with and then open. That's the same as before. We put in a file name. And then we use, instead of R, we use W. So W means write. Okay, so that's going to write to a file. And then you have some actions that come after that. Uh, and then you use the content of, uh, or use this write command to add content to that file. So let's take a look at this and how we're going to do this. So we want to actually get the information that's here that we've got on this screen. I want to get that into, into a file. So what I'm going to say is with open resolutions.txt. So that's the file we're going to create. And then I'm going to do w small w and then a plus. 
Now that plus is important. What that plus does is that tells Python to create the file if it doesn't already exist. And it doesn't already exist. I haven't created it yet. Okay. So with open resolutions.txt and then with w plus as data file, we have a colon here. Now I'm going to go back and take the information from this loop. So just go to the cell above and grab that whole loop. I don't want to type it all out again. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it inside here. And I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you a minute to, to make sure you get that all in there. Okay, I'm going to start back up now. And I'm hoping you've all got this information. So everything we have here stays the same, except I'm not going to use this statement, this print statement. What I want to do is I want to actually write information to that file's resolutions.txt. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use data file and dot write. So now we, we haven't done this before. And we're going to do something a little different as well. We're going to do something called F string formatting. So I'm putting a capital F here followed by a quote sign. And now I can put, I can use a curly brace. I'm going to put in my first variable, which is PDB ID. I want to line this up, up neatly. So I'm going to do a backslash T and that puts a tab in when you're in F string printing. And I'm going to put in resolution in the curly braces again. Then I'm going to get a backslash N, which gives us a new line and finish with a quote. All right. And then I'm going to hit return unexpected indentation block. What did I do? So Paul, your, um, what you mean to be inside of your for loop is not inside of your for loop. Aha. Uh -huh. So what you want to do, you don't want to don't want to end it all of that together. So no, <laughs> fix it to the way that it was. So yeah, and then highlight the part that you want to indent, like click and drag, starting with the comment. Okay. Uh, go all the way to the bottom because you want to indent everything, right? And yep. then press the tab key, and that will indent it all at once. Thanks, Jessica. Yep. You're my hero. All right, so now I didn't get an error, but I don't see anything, okay? The reason I don't see anything is because it was written to a file, not to the screen. So if I go back to my chem compute folder, I see a file called resolutions.txt. And if I click on that file, I see a list of my PDB IDs and a list of the resolutions. And that arrow means it's a tab. Isn't that neat? Okay. So that, that problem happened when I pasted everything in here and I didn't have it indented properly. Looking for any other questions on the chat about that. I don't see anything. There is a little bit about F string formatting on the bottom of the page. And then we have a project here and I'm, I'm looking at the clock. And I'm thinking what I'd like to do is encourage you to, to tackle this project on your own. I mean, this is, this is not a five minute project. Uh, this, I think this would take 
10 minutes if you were energized, clear thinking, hadn't been staring at the screen and listening to us for three hours, over three hours. So um, what I'm going to recommend is that you do take this project home and work on it and set aside an hour or two for it. Now, we're going to give you a link at the end of the workshop to a Jupyter book online that you can go to that has this and the solution, okay? So that you can work on that. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to ask if there are any more questions about writing to a file or work, working with multiple files before I turn it back over to Jessica. And you can put them in the chat window or you could just, you could just ask them out loud. And I do want to commend, for me, it printed the same file name for each resolution. Okay, if it presents, it prints, so, so you're, uh, Arifa, you're saying it printed uh, like 1DDO or something like that. Can I scroll up? Yeah, I just scrolled up. Okay. So I think probably if it printed the same file name for each resolution, then hmm. So that means what yeah. So what that says, Paul, did you want to say what you thought? No, you go ahead. I, I was I, yeah, I think you, you sure? got it. Yeah. Yep, I'm oh. sure. So what that means is that um, every time you're writing to the file, your variable is the same, which means that you're not sort of saving it when you um, when you mean to. So for Paul, I think that he has PDB ID equals split file name. Yep. So this is this is a common error for again. This is like a something that happens when you're getting used to using the Jupyter note notebook. It's really easy easy to do, it used to happen to me a lot. You define a variable like somewhere up here and then you're accidentally using it like in your for loop when you maybe mean to use, like maybe you named it PDB ID, something slightly different, just using the wrong variable. Okay, and she found her error, that's great. But then it's important, it's important to note that as you work with programming, and I think Jessica and Charlie will both reinforce this, you make mistakes all the time and you have to, you have to track them down. Uh, and um, and it, it's not, it's, it's just, that's just how things work. Question mm -hmm. is, isn't there a command to look at all the variables you currently, currently have defined? I, I don't know that. Jessica? No, I think that there, there might be something in the Jupyter notebook um, that tells you specifically, but in Python, I know that, Paul, if you type the word locals and then open and close parentheses, uh, this is harder to see, but this will tell you everything that's actually, yeah, that's not useful. I think the Jupyter, this tells you absolutely everything that the Jupyter Notebook knows about, so that's not helpful. I think that there is um, a special Jupyter Notebook way, but I can't um, quite remember what it is right now. <laughs> Does anyone else um, know? Oh, maybe. Maybe DIR, open and close parentheses. That will tell you all the variable names, but there's a there's a lot here that um, Python knows about that you don't necessarily see. Right. Um, if so, you, go ahead. I think actually there's another interface called Jupyter Lab that right. will list all of the variables for you. Right, um, and we're, we're not running Jupyter Lab here. You can run Jupyter Lab from Anaconda. So, okay. um, yeah. Go ahead, Jessica. Um, I'll talk about it in my section. I'll talk about uh, the question that I saw. Okay. 
All right, so that is processing multiple files. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Jessica now, and she's gonna talk about uh, visualization.